Okay, so let's go ahead and wire up our pie charts now. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the browser and we'll close some of our open tabs here and I'm also going to make a commit. And it looks like we didn't make a commit um, back when we were working on pagination too. So we can say implement pagination and bar chart component. And we'll go ahead and push. So the way that I want to build the pie charts will be a little bit different. Um, let's think about how we might construct it if we wanted to pull some data back for a more general pie chart component and then simply pass that data to the component. And that way we could share the component structure but build different instances of that component depending on the data that we get. So in this case, since we have two pie charts, or in this case specifically donut charts, um, let's maintain that these will be the same component, but we'll pass them different data so that they display um, different visualization here. So what I'm going to do is back in our code, I'm going to head into our section sales component, and we have our two app pie chart components here. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we can right away ng if on this, and let's create a property sales data by customer on our parent section sales component here. And we'll supply some input data, which will be that sales data by customer. And let's also provide um, an input limit, which we'll set to three. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it here as well. Except in this case, we have sales data by state. And here we'll change the limit to say five. So we're reusing our app pie chart, which is a good thing. Um, and we're simply passing it some different data that we need to retrieve here in the parent components so that we can pass it down to these children pie chart components. So let's head into our section sales component.ts and I'm going to go ahead and bring in our sales data service. And we'll go ahead and inject this into the constructor. And so we're going to pass some values down off of properties here in the class. So we created a sales data by customer, which for now will be anything, and sales data by state. So then in our ng on init method, we'll simply invoke our sales data service to return us values for sales data by customer and sales data by state. So let's head back into our sales data service and we'll create two new methods for that. We'll create get order. We'll write a get orders by customer. method which will take a number of customers and just as we had above here we can actually just go ahead and copy this and we're just going to hit a different route this time so copy paste and rather than just hitting the order route we can hit order by customer which was one of the definitions in our API and then we're going to pass it n to limit by the specific number of customers that we'd like to return. And map that result to JSON. Likewise, we have an analogous method to create for get orders by state. And here in our API, I believe we didn't have uh, the built-in um, route to limit. So what we'll do is just simply not pass the limit to this function and we'll say by state. So that's simple enough. Now we can head back into the section sales component. 
And here, when our pie chart component is initialized, we can invoke the service, the stat sales data service, get orders by state, and we'll subscribe to the observable. And then using the response, we will set properties on each of our two, or set values for each of our two properties here on the class. So we'll say this dot sales data by state is equal to the response. And then we'll use the sales data service to get orders by customer and subscribe. And here we'll set sales data by customer equal to this particular response. And here, let's just say we're passing it five uh, for five customers. Oops, and here, obviously, I need to close out the uh, first function. So there we go. We have a pretty simple way to get data from our sales data service. Depending on the structure here, it may or may not be a better idea to simply get all orders and then handle the filtering of that data um, here on the front end. Um, but in this case, we have specific methods from our API that actually return the data that we specifically need. Um, and so we can invoke them directly. Um, the other consideration might be breaking this up um, further into more specific components um, so that we don't make calls that we don't end up actually using. So for instance, if our section sales changed and suddenly we weren't using um, the child component chart, which, which, um, which displayed orders by state, then we will want to make sure that we remove this unused call from the parent component. So there are definitely some uh, things here that we would have to think about as we scale our application um, and just kind of think about the calls that we're making and the structure of the API response the objects that we get back just so that we try to make things as efficient as possible. Um, so for now, we're keeping things kind of simple because we have a relatively small page. Okay, so let's head back into our app pie chart component. And let's be sure to create our inputs. So we, on the template side, we had an input for input data, which we'll say it can be anything for the time being. And we had an input limit which is the number of records that we'd like to show, which would be a type of number. And so we need to be sure to import input from Angular Core as well. So in our ng on init method, let's go ahead and parse the data that we get on our input um, that's sent down from the parent component. And to do that, we will just say this dot parse chart data, and we'll parse, of course, our input data and our limit. So we need to write this method. parse chart data, it'll take the response, um, which is anything that's our input data, and it will take a, optionally, it'll take a limit, which will make a number. And we'll just make that optional. So let's go ahead and create a constant for all of our data. And first of all, actually, let's just console.log out the response data that we get as an input to kind of take a look at it. So we'll head back to our page. And it looks like we're getting um, an error here, so I'll wait for it to pop back up. And what, what are we saying here? So it says failed to execute set attribute on element, comma is not a valid attribute name in our section sales component.html line 17. So let's head into line 17 of our section sales component. Ah, so I have a stray comma here. And so we'll go ahead and remove those. So we'll head back into the page and inspect. And so the data that we're getting back, so you can see our states here, um, along with the total order. And then we have our five customers with their order totals getting sent back from our API as well. So this is the sort of structure of the data. Um, so that's good head back into our code and in our pie chart component we'll go ahead and once again create a constant all data and here what we're going to do is we're going to basically slice the data 
um, by the, you know, according to the limit that we provided. So the data that we're getting back here will be in some cases, you know, states and in other cases, customers along with their order totals. And in at least one of those cases, we have a specific limit on the number of those that we'd like to show. So what we can do is we can slice the response by minus the limit. And so that's going to basically take off um, everything but the first number of elements corresponding to that value of limit that we provided. So if I were to console log this so we can take a look, all data, here we'll say response. which is uh, using a slice. And we take a look at the page now. So here's all the data, um, in this case, for the customer. Um, and so you can see we're getting five results back, whereas once we slice it, we're just getting three results back. And in fact, um, actually with minus slice, I got that backwards, we're getting the, the last three results. So if we switch this to slice on the limit, provided limit is the uh, positive number, and we take a look, we can see the response in the case for our customer list. Uh, the, the entire response are the, the five objects here, and then the slice gets us the last three values of the entire response. And this actually isn't exactly what we want. We want to get the first three elements from this set and not the last three. So let's rewrite that just a bit. Um, so in fact, not negative limit, but what we want is zero to the limit. Um, and now we can go ahead and take a look. So here we have our initial list and now we have the first three. Um, so by minus three, we were taking the last three elements. In other words, the end of the list minus three and now with uh, the two arguments 0 to 3, we're starting at the 0 index and taking until um, the third element after it, which will be the second index here, so we get our sliced array. So that's kind of a nice way to simply grab a particular number of elements from our list that's based on our limit parameter. And now what we want to do is simply grab the name for the labels and then the total for our pie chart data. Um, so that should be pretty straightforward. We can go ahead and remove our console logging. And we'll have uh, this dot pie chart data um, rather than be set um, as sample data here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is simply comment these out. Or in fact, I'll just remove the sample data that we had written previously. So we'll set this that pie chart data to all data dot map and so we could grab by the um, index which in some cases is total um, but we but that actually won't always work and so we'll see why here in a second so let's do our labels as well though so if we were to map on the uh, name index, uh, this again won't always work. But if we take a look at our page, uh, we can see that we are getting uh, um, our chart updated. We have undefined here. So let's see what's going on there. Um, first of all, let's once again console.log out all of our data. And so, yeah, you can see that it's actually working in this chart, but it's not working in the orders by state chart. And that's because we're grabbing by the index name. 
Um, so you can see that in the case of the states, we have um, a property named state, which is not name. And so this may also be the case in general, if you're using an API, um, you may not have control over the name of the objects that are getting returned in your response. Um, so we need to build this to be a little bit more agnostic about the names on the objects that are getting returned. We'll rely on the structure. In other words, we'll still rely on the fact that we have um, an array of objects coming back that have a sort of key value pair. Um, but we can't rely on the name of the key or necessarily the name of the value either. So what we're going to do to resolve this is we're going to use a library called Lodash. Lodash makes it easy to work with um, objects in arrays and it provides us with methods for working uh, functionally in JavaScript in general. So uh, we can go ahead and import it here. We can import and just by convention we'll import underscore from we can import underscore from Lodash and now we'll come down here and rather than sort of grab by the name of these keys what we're going to do is we're going to use Lodash and we'll say Lodash.values of x and the data is simply at the first index so we're going to grab the first and likewise here we'll Lodash.values of x and grab at the zeroth index to get the labels. So now if we take a look at our page, we can see that we get the labels for state and also for the customer, even though technically the names um, of the properties here are different, in one case name and in one case state. Lodash is helping us kind of treat these as arrays, if you will, and just grabbing the zeroth index to grab the label and the first index to grab the um, value of the totals, if you will. So the other thing that you see here is we sort of ran out of colors since we'd only defined three colors for our pie chart. Um, so let's go ahead and clean that up a bit now. What I'm going to do is in our shared directory, I'm going to create a new file called theme.colors.ts. And from here, I'm going to import theme colors from this directory theme.colors.model. I'm going to create a model um, to represent our theme colors. And the model is going to be very simple. It's going to have a name for the theme and then an array of strings to represent the set of colors for that theme. So we'll go ahead and create that model now. We'll create a new file theme.colors.model. And of course this needs to be ts.ts. So there we go. And here we'll export an interface theme colors. And themes will have a name, which is a string, and then a color set, which as we said was a string array. Okay, so then in our theme colors TypeScript file, let's export a constant theme colors which will be a theme colors array. And now we can kind of just place a bunch of different uh, themes in here, if you will, um, as objects. So for instance, let's make a one theme here, which we'll call default. And then our color set we can define as just an array of hex values here. And I'm going to copy and paste some values in here just to make this a little bit um, more expedient. So paste. Okay, and we'll just make one more, and I'll go ahead and paste this in as well. So you could make many more themes uh, that contain many more colors if you like. I'm just going to use this to demonstrate the functionality. So we'll have a default theme and then a bright theme perhaps. So we'll save this file, and then I'm going to go ahead and close the tab, and we'll close out of our theme model. And now in our pie chart component, what I'm going to do is go ahead and import theme colors from shared theme dot colors. And then at the top of our file, we can uh, just define a constant theme and let's set it to bright, for instance. 
which was one of the two themes that we defined. Then what I'll do is create a method and let's just place this towards the bottom of our class here. Um, this could be refactored out into a sort of a separate utility, but um, we'll have theme colors here and what it'll do is it'll take a set name, which is a string, and it's going to return a string array. And so what we'll do is we'll set a constant C, which will be our theme colors, which remember is all of our colors. And what we can do is slice zero and all that does is just as a relatively good practice to actually just simply create a copy of theme colors rather than use that object directly S slice zero will return everything in theme colors just as a new object and then we can use dot find and we'll find the set whose name is equal to the set name that we pass our theme colors method and from that we'll grab the themes color set and then we'll return those colors. So what's cool about this is now we have a method to sort of look up the set of colors defined in our color set um, from our set of themes. And so for these background colors now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and we can simply invoke our theme colors method and pass it our theme name, which we um, defined as um, bright in this case. And of course this needs to be a comma here. You could create a more specific type of theming functionality for Chart.js in general, perhaps, um, by returning an object that, course, that has properties on it that correspond to everything um, that Chart.js takes. For instance, more than just background color, you could create the entire object that returns specific border colors and things of that nature. In our case, just keeping things simple here, we'll just use our themes to change the background colors. So if we go back and take a look at our page now, we have some new colors that are used here in our chart. So if we change that as well to say default, and then take a look, um, you can see that the colors change just as simply as that. So pretty similar color set between these two. Um, but if we were to change them more drastically, then you could get you know completely different themes. 